All right, so this video is going to be a little bit of an introduction to Jafar Panahi, who is the writer, uh, director, and star of Taxi Tehran. Um, just as a quick reminder, this is going to be for Educast Film Studies Section A, Global Film. Um, and in this particular section, you're going to be studying these three core study areas, which are the key elements of film form. So that's the standard stuff, you know, your cinematography, your mise-en-scene, your editing and your sound. Uh, you're also going to be looking at how these different elements are used to create meaning and generate responses. So things like... Um, representations, things like that. And then finally, we're going to look at the context of the film as well. So that includes institutional, social, cultural, political, historical, etc, etc, etc. The majority of the stuff that I'm going to be covering in today's video is probably mainly going to be focused on section three, particularly with um, institutional context, because there's going to be a lot in there discussing Jafar Panahi's role as a director in Iran and his relationship with the um, Iranian uh, Republic um, and how he's been basically treated as a filmmaker by the regime that he is living under. So, this is Jafar Panahi. Just for clarification, he's the one on the right of the picture. Um, he was born in 1960. He is Iranian. Um, before he became a prominent figure in Iranian cinema, he was an army cinematographer, but then went on to study filmmaking at the Iran Broadcasting College of Cinema and TV. Um, some of the people who he has marked as his influences were people like Alfred Hitchcock, Howard Hughes, Brunel, uh, John Luke Goddard, so a couple of names that you hopefully should remember from section A of component one that we did last year. Um, Jafar Panahi is probably one of the most well-known figures of Iranian cinema. Uh, he's quite a big deal uh, in the Iranian new wave film movement, uh, which happened the, uh, arguably after the Islamic Revolution in 1979, but we'll do a bit more about that when we look at the context behind Taxi Tehran. So, he is quite a controversial figure in Iranian cinema um, and that's because his films are often films that are challenging, uh, challenging certainly to the Iranian regime, they're quite confrontational as well, they're quite, you know, they're not afraid to really hold up a mirror to things like injustices or social issues that are affecting the Iranian people. Um, he particularly pays attention to groups that often don't get that much representation in Iranian culture, so especially things like women, children, disabled people as well. So he, is, he does like to act as, you know, like a, like a voice for those kinds of people. Um, I think one key thing that you can associate with Jafar Panahi's work is the idea of truth. Um, that's certainly something that he wants to be representing in the films that he has made. And that does also impact on his style as well. A lot of his films are either straight up documentaries or they have a very heavy focus on documentary style. You know, they want he wants his films to, you know, feel like what you are watching is real life. So a good word that people often associate with Jafar Panahi's work and style is docufiction, which you can see there. So docufiction is a portmanteau word made up of documentary and fiction, um, which, as it says on the screen, a documentary style mixed with fictional elements. So it might look like a documentary in terms of the aesthetic, but the elements of the narrative are going to be fictionalised. Okay. Um, some of the other issues that he has brought up in his films, particularly in Taxi Tehran, is the whole idea of the battle against censorship. You know, particularly censorship of freedom of expression in Iran. The Iranian film industry is very heavily scrutinized and very heavily restricted on what you can and can't say or show or do or have films about. That's one of the things that Taxi Tehran does focus on. So he does challenge that. 
in a lot of different ways. That's one of the main reasons why the Iranian government is very much taking against Jafar Panah, his filmmaking, to some extent. Um, he was, sort of, still is technically, but sort of not at the same time, um, banned from making films in Iran. Uh, it hasn't really stopped him. He was under house arrest as well. Uh, so in the, at the moment, he's in the middle of serving a ban for making films, which is 20 years in total. I can't remember when it's meant to run out, in theory, if it ever will do, to be honest. Uh, and he was under house arrest for a bit of time as well. Um, he, The ban hasn't really worked very well, though. Um, he has still made five films whilst... You know, serving his filmmaking ban, and these films have been internationally released as well, although they've all been banned in Iran. Um, one of the ones that is probably the most infamous is his 2011 documentary, This Is Not a Film, which he shot inside his house. What's most well known about that film is how the film was uh, distributed out of the country because it was smuggled into France. Uh, hidden in a USB stick, hidden in a cake, um, which is you know quite unusual when distributing a film, but it did the job. Um, Taxi Tay Ryan was another film he made during his filmmaking ban. Uh, he also made three other films, Three Faces, The Year of the Everlasting Storm, and No Bears as well. No Bears is his most recent film. Um, he has been, he's had issues with uh, prison over the last couple of months or so, or the last year or so, I suppose. Um, he was arrested last July, 2022. Uh, at this point, there were a few Iranian filmmakers who were being arrested and detained in prisons. Um, Panah, he went down to the um, prison to find out why and was arrested himself. Uh, he was sentenced to six years in prison, but he has been released. Uh, and I think as far as I know, his travel ban might have been lifted because his wife did recently post on I think Instagram, I think it was, that he was in France. Uh, there was a big campaign at the time when his film No Bears was released to get Panahi released from prison. So you'd see the hashtag Free Jafar Panahi on his tra trailers for the film, on some posters, not all of them. Uh, it did the rounds on social media quite a lot as well. Um, and it did eventually work because he was released from prison in February. <clears throat> um, Panahi is certainly, you, you wouldn't call him a mainstream filmmaker at all, but he is someone who is very well respected in international filmmaking communities. Um, his films often do very well in um, prestigious film awards. So things like the Cannes Film Festival, Berlin, Beijing, others as well. His films tend to do very well in those sorts of filmmaking communities. Uh, he's won some very prestigious awards as well. So the one that's most relevant to us is the fact that Taxi Tehran won the Golden Bear at the Berlin Film Festival. That's a very prestigious award to win. He, so he is someone who is very well respected in that particular community. Uh, in fact, actually, he wasn't allowed to attend the Berlin Film Festival in 2015 to collect the awards, but I think his niece had to go instead, who ironically stars in the film as well. Um, so, Panahi does have a very particular style, um, and there is a particular reason behind his style as well. I did mention this previously, that one of the key things, or the key words really, that you would associate with Panahi's filmmaking is the word truth, because that's what his films want to try and represent. Now, what we will do is spend a little bit of time in class looking at things like, well, what does truth actually mean? You know, whose version of the truth are we actually looking at here? But the fact that he wants to make his films reflect the truth impacts on his style of filmmaking. Um, one of the reasons why he makes his films look like documentaries is because he wants to give the impression that what you are looking at is real life, or at least is an allegory for real life issues. You know, um, he wants people to understand, you know, what Iranian society is like 
in his films. Um, a good couple of terms you can use when describing this filmmaking style. First of all, neorealist. So neorealist means making films that r attempt to tell truth. You know, they need to have, you know, a feeling of being natural or, like it says there, authenticity. Docu fiction I have already mentioned. Um, cinema verite, uh, that's on the next slide, so I'll go over that on the next slide. But again, it, it links to that whole idea of cinema representing the truth. Um, because he wants to depict social issues. You know, he wants people to be watching his films and understanding what these people are going through and how that reflects, you know, real life, essentially. Um, that's one of the things that Taxi Tehran does really well, is it has all these different characters and each character represents a different potential issue that is, you know, inherent in Iran and he wants to draw attention towards those. Um, you could also, especially the Taxi Tehran, talk about how Jafar Panahi's films are quite postmodern, uh, in a sense that they're very self-reflective. Um, you will get a lot of occurrences in the film where Panahi is breaking the fourth wall, you know? He will address the camera, or characters will address the camera. You know, he will look at the camera. They will make reference to the fact that there is a camera in this taxi whilst they're driving around in Tehran. Um, the fact that Panahi is playing a version of himself as well. And he even references, all the characters that he speaks to reference him as, you know, Jafar Panahi, the Iranian filmmaker. And also referencing some of the other, other films that he's made as well. So he's very postmodern, very self aware. Um, he he wants you to know that you're watching a film. All right, so it is, even though it go, it's going for that truth aspect of it, there is still elements of postmodernism in there as well that are quite, can be quite challenging sometimes. Um, so I mentioned this on a previous slide, uh, Cinema Verite. Again, this is something that has been very much influential on Panahi's filmmaking style. So this is a, it's a French film movement, another one that we've looked at, I know. Um, it translates as cinema truth or truthful cinema. And like it says on the, on the screen, the main purpose of films that are following a cinema verite approach is for things to be as authentic as possible. All right. Authentic issues, authentic dialogue, authentic you know, performances. But the point of that is because the films need to reflect truth. Okay. It's not about... I don't know, escapism. It's not about, you know, something that is fake. It's meant to be telling the truth. So I think this is really important for Jafar Panahi's filmmaking style as well. Everything about the way Taxi Tehran has been put together is in order to tell the truth. Okay, it aims to be something that is cinema verite. So cinema verite, good little term to use there. Now, <clears throat> in terms of Panahi himself, his relationship with the Iranian regime is, I think, probably quite a tense relationship, which is probably putting it lightly, to be honest. Um, Panahi's work is regularly criticised by the Iranian government, and the vast majority of his films are outright banned in Iran. Now, one of the reasons for that and again, this is something that Panahi references in Taxi Tehran, is the fact that he's been accused of committing something called Sianamai here, which is a really hard word to spell, so good luck trying to memorise that. Um, but Sianamai. Now what that means is, it's a Persian word, as it says there, which translates as portraying like black. And what it means is, it means that films... It means that his films have been accused of basically negatively representing Iran. Um, you know, and a lot of the time that's argued that it's done deliberately because it wants to try and pander to Western audiences. You know, uh, so he says here, 
Persian, portraying light black, describes films allegedly presenting a dark image of Iran and frequently used by the conservatives to denounce them. Some Iranian critics believe that films portraying a gloomy or dark image of social conditions under the Islamic Republic or an exotic and primitive image of Iranians in rural settings only seek to win awards. So it's almost like they're saying, well, it, it's accusing Panahi of not telling the truth. It, it's just a way of you're representing Iran this way because you want to win awards and you want to be, you know, pandering to Western audiences. Um, obviously, you know, that'll depend on whether you think his films are, uh, what's I'm looking for, um, committing cyanamite, it's, you know, down to your own interpretation. Uh, but that's certainly something that he's been accused of. Um, this is a specific reference, or sorry, response, that the Iranian government had to taxi Tehran. Um, when he won the Golden Bear Prize at the Berlin Film Festival, he basically was quoted as saying, no prize is worth as much as my compatriots being able to see my films. Now, what he's basically saying there was, he was making reference to the fact that his film was banned in Iran, uh, and he's been banned from making films. And he is basically there saying that he would rather his films be able to be watched by people in Iran than win any awards. So he's almost coming out to say, well, he's not interested in winning these awards. Yes, they're nice, but he would rather people be able to watch his films in his home country than win all these awards. All right. Um, the Iranian government basically said it was a load of nonsense and they don't believe him. So they, they were quoted as quoted saying, I regret that you, Panahi in this case, wish to drive everybody in a taxi, see what they did there, of new misunderstandings about the Iranian people by screening a film made by a director who had been banned by law from making films. So I think for me the key thing here is you want to drive everybody in a taxi of new misunderstandings about the Iranian people. So again, they're, they're, they're basically saying that he is committing this. He is portraying Iran as gloomy and dark and social conditions you know, are you know, negative, I suppose you could say. Um, some people though argue <clears throat> that despite the fact that um, the Iranian government ban his films uh, or ban him from making films, they have been a little bit sort of relaxed about the actual ban itself. I mean, if you consider the fact that he was banned from making films for 20 years and he still managed to make five films during that ban, you know, you'd argue it's probably not being enforced very well. So some people argue that even though his films are very critical of the Iranian regime, they like the fact that his films draw attention to Iran because it heightens their profile, even though they're criticizing, it's criticizing Iran. So there's a little bit of sort of... Um, you know, hip arguable hypocrisy there, maybe. I suppose I couldn't really find any any concrete quotes, you know, confirming that. But it's certainly something that you know, some, like something that's been sort of alleged. Um, so it's something to think about, anyway. Really, you know, even though the films are being very critical of that regime, it's still bringing attention to the country, isn't it? So it's it's a it's a tricky one to think about. Um, but that's basically it as a little bit of an introduction to Jafar Panahi. For me, I think the most important things really are these things. So his style, definitely his style. Uh, but more importantly, why does he choose to have that particular style? What's the purpose of his films? Because one thing you'd say about Panahi is he does not make films for them to be you know, financially successful. You know, his films aren't financially... I mean, they, they might turn a profit, sure, but they're not, they're not, you know, pure entertainment. You know, they're not looking for box office returns at all. Um, so why is he making these films? What's the purpose? What's he trying to say with these films? So that's also really important. But also his style. And how does he use his style to say the things that he wants to say? All right, how has his style been impacted or influenced by the context in which you know he finds himself? Especially all this stuff as well, the fact that he is he has been banned from making films. Alright, how did all that stuff 
impact on how Taxi Tehran was made. Um, he's a really interesting person to do some more to do some research about. Uh, I definitely recommend doing some more wider reading on him and watching some of his other films as well. Uh, I've not seen No Bears yet. Apparently, it is quite good, but this is not a film that's definitely worth watching. Um, if you've got any more questions about Jafar Panahi or anything at all, come and find me, send me an email, come and see me or Rob. Uh, if not, I will catch you next time.